Okay, today we're going to continue working on function form, and we are going to take equations from standard form, where the variables x and y are on both sides of the equal sign, into function form, where we've solved the equation by isolating the variable y on one side of the equal sign by itself. So we're going to write the equation in function form, then graph the equation. So the first thing you want to do is you always want to look at the variable you're isolating. And in this case, it's y. We want it by itself. And then you ask yourself, what is happening to y? Well, it's being added by x. So we have to get rid of x. And in order to do that, we undo addition. So we will subtract x. And remember, we have to do that from both sides of the equal sign to maintain equality. Bring down your y. And again, we talked about the fact that um, when you have two terms that are not like terms, you cannot combine them. However, it will be two independent terms. So look at the uh, sign of the term. We have a positive 2 and a negative x. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the negative x right here and plus 2. So now I have it in function form. I'm going to go ahead and pick a couple um, things. So I'll just do a little table here of x and y. So my input and output. So if I pick negative 1, so remember that's a negative x. So if I start out with a negative 1, the opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. Positive 1 plus 2 is 3 for my output. If I do 0, my output would be 2. If I do a positive 1, I want the opposite of positive 1. So a negative 1 plus 2 is 1. And now I'm ready to graph. So if I graph negative 1, 3, I'll do my best to hit the bullseye here, and then 0, 2, and 1, 1. You can see that all three points fall in a line, use a straight edge, draw your arrows, and you have the equation in function form and graphed. We're going to do about six of these today. All right, so not always are these equations <laughs> without parentheses. So remember, don't forget that when you see parentheses, you must distribute whatever is outside the parentheses inside the parentheses. So all the properties of solving equations come into play. So 3 times 2y is 6y. 3 times a negative x is negative 3x and that's going to be equal to 12. Now again, we want to solve for y. It's being multiplied by 6 and then subtracted by 3x. We'll get rid of the 3x first, so we add, using the additive inverse, to both sides. When you simplify, 6y is equal to, this is a positive 3x and a positive 12. Now I'm going to be <clears throat> dividing all three terms by the coefficient of y, which is a positive 6. So divide everything by 6 and simplify. So we get y by itself. Um, I can simplify 3 over 6 to be 1 over 2x. And 12 divided by 6 is a 2. Now, you know, you could always change that 1 half to a decimal, but if you just pick multiples of 2, you can make the math pretty easy. So if we make a little xy table, and I pick negative 2, 0, and 2. So when x is negative 2, I will, uh, the 2's will cancel, and I'll have a negative 1 plus 2, which is equal to a positive 1. When this whole term of x is 0, because 0 times a half is 0, I end up with an output of 2. And when it's a positive 2, the first term becomes 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. So I can graph these as negative 2, 1, 0, 2, and 2, 3. And there we have a line. Connect the dots and draw the arrows. Example 3. <clears throat> I'm going to get into 
some fractions and that's going to be okay as well. So we're going to still follow the same steps. We want to isolate y, so we have to undo it being multiplied by that negative 2 and um, added by the 3x. So we'll subtract 3x. Remember, you want the additive inverse. A lot of times kids will see this subtraction and they'll try to um, add it back in. But remember, it's this term you have to look at and it's a positive 3 and we need it to be 0 so the inverse or opposite um, additive inverse would be negative 3 on both sides, negative 3x. That cancels it. Bring down your negative 2y and then I go ahead and sneak in the term of x by the equal sign and the positive 6. So now I'm dividing by negative 2 that cancels. I get y by itself. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, but I don't want to change this to a decimal, so I'm just going to leave it as a positive 3 over 2x, and then, oops, got all carried away there. Um, when I divide a positive 6 by a negative 2, I get a negative 3, so I can just simplify that to my equation as negative 3. Now I'll pick some values of x so I can get the output. If I pick negative 2, 0, and 2, again notice when I have the fractions I pick multiples of the denominator. So if I have a negative 2, um, the 2's will cancel out to be 1, and then I have a negative 3 So a negative 3 minus 3 is going to be negative 6. If 3 over 2 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. And if I use a positive 2, I'll have um, the 2's will cancel out and it will leave a 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So I can graph this, so negative 2, negative 6, would be about right there. 0, negative 3, sorry, <laughs> and then 2, comma, 0. The only way to do this is if I change like the thickness of the line and then I put it down. There we go. Oh, look at that. Lovely. All right, and then when you draw your line, Go right through the three points. Oh, much better. Technology, it's a wonderful thing. All right, let's try a couple more. In example four, kind of going back to um, kind of like example one, why don't you go ahead and give this one a try? And I'll pause the video. Okay, first thing is to subtract x from both sides. We're left with y is equal to a negative x plus 1. Picking values of x to get outputs of y, I went ahead and picked negative 1, 0, and 1. So the opposite of negative 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 0 plus 1 is 1, and the opposite of 1 um, is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So I'm ready to graph. So a negative 1, 2 would be about right there. 0, 1, and 1, 0. And draw the line with the arrows. Okay. fun. Another one with fractions. All right, again, start out by subtracting or adding. Now remember, sometimes you might have a negative term of x. So it looks like all of the ones so far that we've done just so happened to be a coincidence that we were subtracting the term of x. But remember, you're using the additive inverse. So if this were rearranged and the whole problem was different as 4y minus 11x, you'd be adding the 11x. 
So just keep that in mind. You're using additive inverse to move the term of x to the other side because you have to do the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. So bring down your 4y, your negative 11x, and your negative 12, dividing by a positive 4. You'll get a very messy fraction, but that's okay. And then you want to go ahead and pick terms of y. Okay, so we want to pick some values that are multiples of 4 for x. So I did negative 4, 0, and 4. Now we're going to get some um, larger output values, and I apologize that the graph I have on the PowerPoint isn't going to be large enough, but when you're drawing your own or if you're numbering or labeling your own and you get some larger outputs, you can always count by twos and, and change the way you number your graph. So if x is equal to negative 4, um, I'll go ahead and show you some of the work here. So a negative 11 over 4 and x is negative 4. The negative times a negative is going to make this a positive 11, okay? And a positive 11 um, minus 3 is going to be a positive 8. So our output will be a positive 8. So when the whole term is 0, right, minus 3, it will be a negative 3. And this is where it gets to be a little bit larger because that's a negative 3. When we have a negative, I'm sorry, a positive 4, this first term is going to stay as a negative 11. A negative 11 minus 3 is a negative 14. So we might not even use that last point because it'll be so far off the chart. So if I'm going to graph this equation, I'm going to have a negative 4 and 8, so it's going to go 1 above, and then I'm going to have 0 and negative 4. So you can kind of see how very steep this line is, and I'll try to make it as without a straight edge. Wish me luck. Yeah, it's got a little curve to it, but using a straight edge, you could make that a straight line through those two points. And again, you wouldn't have to use that third point. Um, at least two of them, though, would be good. And our final example. Sometimes, um, like looking at this, I've got all three terms on the left-hand side. So the first one I'm going to get rid of is the constant. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So I get a negative 8y plus 9x is equal to 4. I'll subtract 9x from both sides. And I put that next to the equal sign. And then I divide by a negative 8. So, again, with the fractions, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So this is, I want to leave it as a fraction. And then a positive 4 divided by a negative 8 is a negative 1 half. I just go ahead and simplify that. If I choose, and again I talk about using the denominator, I could use some values here, like negative 8, 0, and 8. By doing the math, uh, negative 8 times um, 9 divided by 8, and then adding, or subtracting, sorry, one half, I would get a negative nine and a half. If it is zero, I get the negative half, and if it's positive, I get a positive eight and a half. But what if I used something different? Like we talked about um, numbers that would be multiples, and we could also use factors. So if I used a positive 4, just as an example, and I substitute in that, the 4 cancels out to 1, and the 8 cancels out to 2, so I'm taking 9 divided by 2. So I'm kind of reducing that value of that coefficient of x, which would be um, 9 divided by 2 is 4 and a half, and if I subtract a half from that, I actually get a number. So that's a whole even positive number. So if I'm going to graph some of these, I'll start with 
the zero half because that's right here in the middle of the origin. So um, zero, negative half, and I'll do that right about there. And then um, if I graph the four comma four, this will be a little bit easier too. So you can always look for numbers that'll make it um, fit on your graph to be easier. And then I draw my line with my arrows. So that's what you're gonna be doing tonight is practicing putting your equations in function form and then also graphing them.